those two classes are kind of di uh, uh, merging into the zombie shopkeeper. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about engine subsystems. Basically, we want to be able to initialize and clean up after our subsystem so we don't have any memory leaks. We want to be able to get everything going in a specific order so we're not leaving ourselves open to undefined behavior. To that end, we're going to talk briefly about a C++ topic called static object construction order. Uh, I'll go into that in just a bit. Before we get started though, if you haven't had a chance, please click that subscribe button. It means a lot to me and lets me know that I'm doing things good. So uh, enjoy the video. Uh, so for our subsystems, I want them to be static variables, and that just means that there's only going to be one individual instance of each one of these variables. The problem with static variables, though, is, or even static classes, static objects, is that I don't know when the constructor and the destructor are called. It's a classic issue in C++. It's actually called the static object construction order problem and also destruction order problem. The reason for that is that the compiler just kind of assumes that these things are initialized and so they don't they're not initialized in any specific order, it's just that by the time you get to the thing, you're sure that it's been initialized. And that's an issue, because there are some subsystems that are going to depend on other subsystems. Like, for example, Windows systems and input systems kind of have this codependency where you need a window to be able to get the input events to set things in the input system. So, because of that problem, instead of having the constructor and the destructor handle initializing and cleaning up anything that that system needs, the constructor and the destructor are going to do absolutely nothing. Uh, this is kind of a brute force approach where I'm going to have each subsystem have an init function and a cleanup function, similar to what the game class has currently. Uh, and so each subsystem is going to have to have those two things defined. Those are going to handle allocating any memory that the subsystem needs, setting up any particular settings, uh, and then also cleaning everything up to make sure that I'm not letting anything leak out, uh, not creating any memory leaks or unintentional bugs or undefined behavior. And so each individual subsystem will have its init function called and its cleanup function called by the game class. Uh, the game class is going to be managing all of these different subsystems for us. With that in mind, to ensure that the subsystems have those two functions and that they're defined to do what I want, I'm going to create what's called a mix-in interface. Uh, this is kind of an ab abstract concept from object-oriented programming. It's not a thing that I do super often, but essentially there's this concept of multiple inheritance where you can have an object, a class, that has two parents. And so in the classic example of the shopkeeper and the zombie and then the zombie shopkeeper, those two classes are kind of merging into the zombie shopkeeper that has all of the attributes of both. And then as a branch of that, there's this thing called mixins that basically have a very specific and limited functionality and you include those into any class so that that class also has that functionality. So what I'm gonna be creating is a base subsystem class. Uh, it's gonna be completely virtual. The only thing it's gonna define is that the constructor and the destructor do nothing and that there is an init function and a cleanup function that needs to be defined by any subsystem system that also uses it. So that's how this is going to be set up. I'm just going to implement that real quick in the code and I will see you guys in a few minutes. So I have finished implementing the subsystem interface, uh, which you can see here, it's very simple. It just has a couple of pure virtual functions uh, in it and cleanup. Those have to be defined in anything that uses it. And then I've got an example uh, window system here. Uh, so you can see that I have defined these as override, uh, and those are actually set up in a platform dependent way. Uh, so I'll show that in a second. And then I've also got some extra stuff to keep track of, like a void pointer to the window type, since it's platform independent. I don't actually know 
what the window type is. GLFW uses a GLFW window pointer, uh, so that's why I went with a void pointer here. And so hopefully that should translate well into other uh, graphics APIs down the road, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Anyway, if I then go to the window implementation here, uh, and most of this code is just moved over from the original window system uh, in the Alkahest engine. Uh, so a lot of this was just copied and pasted and made to work with the new setup. Like here I'm reinterpreting our void pointer as a GLFW window pointer. So that is set up. I didn't handle most of the events. I don't have an input system yet uh, and I haven't defined any event callbacks at the game level. So for right now I am just doing uh, the basic reset size callback that's the only one that was currently set up that didn't require the event system or the input system uh, but yeah so all of this is configured now uh, I've got the window system there and then in our CMake file you can see that I'm pulling in the target dependent or the platform dependent uh, window file so let's hop out of here real quick and then you can see if I were to build, everything builds just fine. And then if I run, then we get a little window that I can move around. A little bit of lag there. And I think that's just because I'm not handling events properly on the back end of this. But yeah, so that is currently working. And I can keyboard interrupt there to close it out. And that's it for this episode. Next time, we're going to be talking about memory management, including creating a custom memory allocator for the game engine. Thanks again for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like or a comment. If you really liked it, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.